All right, thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Simonas, for inviting. Always nice to be here. Now it's ju just curiosity. Is there some architects here? No architects? One, very good. Congratulations. We, I, I was part of um, a Swedish um, digitalization effort called Building 4.0, trying to, to uh, find the ways to be more efficient in, in, in construction, and they didn't uh, attract any architects to be part of. And, and when they talked to architects, they said, we are not part of the construction process, so we don't want to participate. Very strange. <laughs> but I agree, they should be more architects. Uh, very short about me, just so you have a perspective of uh, my, what is my perspective towards the construction. I'm, uh, I've not been working in Lithuania. Uh, from 2006, I'm, I've studied abroad, worked abroad. From 2011, I'm living in, and working in Sweden. Um, and I've been in different parts of the construction process, all as contractor, as designer, and the last eight years as uh, design and project manager on behalf of the project owners and developers. So this is more, my, my perspective is a bit more global, not, not uh, specific on, on uh, uh, how to affect, make more efficient building or design process, but more, more how to collaborate maybe more efficient. So it's, it can be good to know. And I'm, I'm uh, since 2019 uh, working at, at my own company, Domingo Design, as a freelancer, uh, mostly. This is some just examples of, of the projects I'm working now. The first one is, uh, a hospital project in Stockholm. Uh, we'll come back to it. It's very interesting. And I also do some services for the Swedish National uh, Board, uh, uh, National Property Board of Sweden, with some embassies abroad uh, in, in Poland, in Italy, and uh, to some small assignment in Islamabad also. Yeah, this is what I do. Uh, Sweden, yes. It's uh, about five times bigger in area than. Uh, Lithuania, 10 million people, more or less, uh, has uh, had a very strong economy, uh, still has a very strong economy. Uh, can, what can be interesting to know, the construction sector is about 10% of the, of the GDP of Sweden, uh, so it's quite big, employs a lot of people, it's an important sector. Uh, it has been fueled a lot by the growth of the prices. Uh, the prices in last 15 years in Sweden have, uh, for apartments, grew by 800%. So it's be it was better to buy an apartment than to invest in Facebook, probably, um, especially now that the price went down. Uh, and also the same to the stock market. In Sweden, they don't call it a bubble. It's not a bubble. <laughs> Nobody is, uh, dares to, to say it. Uh, but Probably it is. Uh, they produce too much money, and, and uh, the, the shortage of housing was a big problem for many, many years, so uh, the prices just went up. Um, uh, if we look at the Sweden from digitalization perspective, it's one of the leading countries in, in the digital literacy. They, they have adopted early a lot of technologies. Uh, they educated population quite early. And uh, this means that the standard of what you can do with digital tools is set every day. When you go to buy coffee, when you go to, when you build an IKEA kitchen, for example, you do it at home, draw everything, you get a list of everything you want to, you need, uh, you send it, you, you don't need to go, out, go anywhere, you, you do it everything from home. Uh, using cash is like, uh, it's, it's almost unethical in, in Sweden. Uh, if, if it's, it's more or less like eating with a mouth full of food if, if you offer someone to, to give cash. Uh, uh, so it's, it's, uh, they, they are a step ahead of the average level of the world, if you say so. And this also reflects then on construction sector. When people come to the building companies, uh, construction companies, they, they have some expectation level of what you should be able to do. As a result, it's, it's also a unicorn land. It's, uh, they produce a lot of big uh, startup companies that attract a lot of financing. This is some list from uh, Bloomberg, I think. Um, Klarna is, I don't know if anybody heard, but it's a finance company that if you buy an internet, you don't need to pay at once. You just press buy, and then you sign it, and then you can pay later. Uh, and then they are huge. It's $31 billion valuated. Uh, the last one on the list is Big Facta. It is, it's interesting, it's, it's uh, from the uh, building sector. Um, 
I don't know if you can call it a startup, it's quite old uh, company, but they're on the list anyway. It's, it's just like a market uh, uh, for the all construction projects in Sweden. So you can find all, ongo all projects in, in Sweden and what stage they are, what is the contact person. So it is a cell platform, basically. And they have uh, gained valuation by entering into the stock market. So, they, so it's not financing, it's, it's a real valuation. Yes, uh, construction sector. So I want to tell you about some things that are happening today and uh, uh, something that probably can be applied also in Lithuanian projects. Um, again, I have no, I've not been working in Lithuania, so I cannot give you uh, compare, you, you'll need to draw conclusions yourself if, if, you, if you can apply or not, but um, my goal was to try to find some, um, uh, some examples that, that are already happening and, and uh, it's not a dream that will be happening. Uh, and I needed to delete half of my slides so it, I will uh, fit in 20 minutes, it was a challenge. <laughs> so I have more examples if you want to talk afterwards. Um, what is on the Swedish construction companies and property developers' agendas today? Uh, this also can tell you more or less what will happen in the future. Uh, the first one is, of course, save the planet. It's, um, uh, we, need, we need to do much more than we're doing today. The goals uh, are being set every day, and in every bigger company, it is on agenda. And they will invest money, they are putting money. It is, it is, if you're not doing it, then, then uh, you will not be participating in the game. Um, then the last one is uh, what was the first presentation about, the prices are rising, everybody's experiencing that, and uh, uh, hopefully, as we heard, it will end soon. Um, and then the, the middle one, the digitalization. It's also on agendas, and it was driven, I think, a lot early, it was driven a lot by the uh, management consultants, uh, and driven by fear, that if you will not do it, you will be left behind and, and you will die. Uh, that was more or less the, uh, the agenda. But slowly it became um, more that there is opportunities, it's, there is ways to do it better. Uh, so, so I think slowly it's, it's getting there that, that people are trying to adapt and use the digital technologies. Yes, so now, now if we jump to the um, some examples. Uh, it's, First one is construction ID card that is used in Sweden. It's called ID06, and it's not what you think. 06, it's a number, uh, not something else. Uh, it is, uh, uh, more or less, it started for, um, to eliminate black, uh, the labor that is illegal from construction sites. And every construction site you enter, you need to check in. Uh, so. so then you automatically get a construction, uh, construction log of all people who are involved in the project and also the ones who are actually on site today. Um, and then it gets better because to all these personal profiles you can, you can add or, or it's already being added all the driving licenses, uh, certificates, courses. So all, all the ones, the providers of the, of the education, uh, they, they directly to your profile, you get all the certificates. So when you come to site and you check in, the responsible for safety knows that you are uh, allowed to drive a, a truck or forklift or build a scaffolding or whatever you need to do. Uh, and the last, the last slide uh, or, or the last picture there is, is for its example of a safe construction training. It's also compulsory for all people working in construction who are part of, of a particular group. Uh, this is my, uh, from my picture. It's also, you do it at home. It's all the safety regulation guidelines. Uh, you, you make the course, you check off them, and then it's directly added to your ID card. Uh, and this, I think this is the trend, this is the future. It's, it's going there. Think about the, the traditional way to do a course. Uh, you need a certificate to win a tender. Uh, you leave, you're leaving the tender last minute, as usual, and then you find out that your uh, certificate is not, uh, it, it's valid for five years and it's not valid anymore. Maybe two months ago it, it expired. And then to book a course, you, you, it, maybe it's in Stockholm in three weeks or in three months, uh, and, and you cannot do it. You cannot give, uh, you cannot do it. Uh, so the, the opportunity is great because then it will be so that 
you do it at home, you can leave the, the, uh, the tender and then maybe you win it, and the value is enormous. So I think that there will be a lot of courses that will be digital and will be without live teacher just to get the certificate. Uh, so it's, it's, yeah, trend number one probably. Uh, then the other one that I want, it's, I think it's a very good example, so I, I want to show it. Uh, how much is applicable, I don't know, but it's review process. In, in Sweden, it's very popular. In every project, you do some revision of design before you start construction, before you release the drawings. And the traditional way is that project manager, design manager, um, initiates the process, and then you have, uh, say, 10, 10 designers doing the revision, and everybody is sending you Excel list, 10 Excel lists that you then merge together, send back to everyone, and then somebody answers on one item, executes the other item, and, and they send you back, and then you have to send back to everyone again, and then, <laughs> and it goes on like this, and you can hear it's madness, it's, it's crazy. Uh, and now the alternative is the, if, if you think about a PDF drawing that, that you mark on directly where you see the comment, it's color marked, you know what is the status, uh, you can communicate in it, you can send directly from the, from the tool uh, to the person uh, who asks the question, uh, you can follow up on items, and you don't need to do this, all, all the collaboration and excelling and uh, ooh, never again after you do it once. Uh, and this is the, the main concept, I think, of digitalization when you speak about the communication, that uh, you can eliminate this unnecessary back and forward and do it in, in one source of the one source of uh, truth, so to say. Uh, and it's also it's Bluebeam is one is it a, is a program. It's it's a good example. There is also Dalux that have similar where you can also see three D, for example. And there probably are other tools. It's just an example of one good tool that is very popular in Sweden. The biggest Swedish contractors came together and they developed a st standard called BEAST for the, for the revision process. And, uh, and this is also an example of digitalization where competitors come together to make life easier for everyone in the market. Um, and the la last big one, uh, it's paperless projects. Um, it started with... Um, uh, one of the biggest projects in Sweden, Slusen. When they started the project, they saw that they would need 10,000 drawings just to make the foundation. And then they said, no, it's impossible. We don't have time, we don't have money, we, we don't do it. So they decided to do it without drawings, the traditional drawings that you print out. Um, and at least the first part is still ongoing project, so the first part they have done it. They have done without any, any traditional drawings. Uh, uh, foundation and uh, the further it goes, the more complicated it will get for them. Uh, but this this was a, a breaking ground for the new era, so to say, about thinking: How do you do the project? Why do you need drawing? Uh, because they, they they broke down the project and and they uh, identified what information we deliver with drawings, and then they eliminated the drawing and say, okay, but we deliver information directly. If it's coordinates, it's coordinates. If it's text, it's text. If, if it's a, a drawing the detail, then it's a detail, but they don't call it drawing. It's, you don't need to print it, so to say. Uh, so, so they do, did this exercise that, that catch, caught a lot of attention in the world, and um, I've spoke many times to, to the guy who, who led this. It's really senior expert in the, in the area, and, and uh, it's really, I think he broke a, a chain that, that, and opened the door to, to the new era. And uh, after that, th there, there are several projects inspired by this, and the, the very famous one now, now in Sweden is Celsius project. Um, it's a basis that you have B model that is uh, centered to all the information, uh, it is a contract document, so it's not just an informational document, it's a contract document. All the quantities are taken from this model. Uh, contractors don't use any traditional drawings, they use the, the model. Um, they use Stream BIM as, as a tool to access this, uh, these uh, drawings and, and, and uh, uh, models. 
and it's uh, being executed and, and it's, it's happening, so to say, today. And then we can jump to, to the projects I'm working with. I'm with this project from the beginning, from 2019. Um, and uh, from the early stage, we decided that we want to do uh, something similar, uh, that we will have a project that can be executed totally digitally. And it was before pandemic come, so it was really, really a good decision. Uh, but um, the, the idea was that we, we should be able to access all the information through the computers, telephones, uh, iP search iPads or what, whatever they're called. Uh, <clears throat> it is a quite a big project. It's uh, 34,000 square meters, one, uh, 180 million euros. Uh, has a helicopter on top, and it's in the middle of the con in the middle of existing hospital area. So it's very very dense and, and hard to access. Very little area. So it's, it's really a challenging project. Uh, and then on top of that, we try this new method to, to do it uh, digitally. So just some examples, so you could see how, how what, what do we mean? Uh, this is, we have a, start, a home page for the project uh, where you have a webcam that shows. Uh, what is the status? What's happening every every minute of the project? This is standard. It's not it's not something strange. But on this uh, web page, you can find all the project related information. Uh, here you can find uh, contacts. You can find uh, gu guidelines. Uh, you can find anything you could need uh, to to make deliveries to to the project and similar uh, goals of the project and so on. And then we have three main. Uh, so core tools that we use to, to execute this digitally. Uh, one is BMI, Swedish product, uh, Dalux, and then we have Jira. Uh, and BMI is a requirement uh, database. Uh, if you can imagine hospital construction, every room has a specific requirement. And in this project, we have a lot of rooms. And every room has maybe four pages of, uh, of uh, requirements. Uh, different. Uh, so it's, it is a lot of information. And we also use BMI for the door uh, database, I will show you later. Um, then we have Dalux for access uh, for file documents models. And we, have it, we use it also with communication for the contractors. And then Jira, uh, it's a, a project communication. So we don't have emails in the project. We don't use emails. Uh, this is how, how the Jira looks like. It is instead of email, you make uh, in the portal, you make a, a, same as e email, you write the header, you make attachments, and then there is some uh, information about, uh, you give some, some smart information so you can filter everything uh, easier. And then if you scroll down, it's, uh, you, then you have a communication uh, with, a, with all included, and you can, you can add wh whoever you want. So you don't need to send five emails to different people, and then somebody answers only to you. It's always visible to everyone. It's always transparent, clear. And uh, one very good part that we found uh, out in this pro process was that if somebody is uh, changing the job or leaving, it's very easy just to transfer uh, all assignments to the new person. And as a project management, we have a lot of consultants working everywhere. There is no hidden information left. Everything that is here is here. Uh, we, are, we were very clear from the beginning. You cannot, uh, if it's not in Jira, it's, it doesn't exist. If you wrote email, sorry, it's your fault. Uh, everything should be here that matters. Then it's very clear. Then you don't, cannot uh, say something else. 10,348. I, I counted in the morning, all of them, one by one now. <laughs> uh, this is how many Jira items we have in the project. And we are starting the construction. We have we have finished with foundation, starting with a, with a prefab. Uh, so this is the design phase, more or less. Uh, and this is only the, the, so to say, main email. Then in each... Uh, this Jira, you have communication. And this is more, then you get understanding of how much communication is happening in the project that you usually are not aware. Uh, so it's, it's really transparent. You can see who is communicated with who, uh, where the information is flowing, who, where are the biggest information uh, flows, and, and it really helps you to see if somebody is lacking behind, because you know that the issues are not answered in time. Uh, 
and then it started as, as one project, and then it grew up, it, it grew in many projects. We have a portal, all are, to, are, all, all, all are joined together, but uh, we have portals for uh, communication with uh, uh, tenants, uh, with contractors, with, uh, uh, and, and we have our own uh, project management portal where we can communicate between ourselves. And now it says the time is up. So I, I go very quickly. We have also Dalux uh, that we use the communication with contractors. Um, question, answer, reports, and everything. Uh, it's really powerful tool because it makes model access very, very accessible. Really, really easy. And this is the first time we see that the model is used so much. We have used all these navies and everything before, but this is the, the first time I can see that we actually, in every level, everybody is accessing the model. And this is a huge value. Uh, then we have a BMI. This is a big database where we can export, uh, for example, doors. Uh, we have 1,400 doors in the project. Every door has uh, a door card. And every door card has, as you see below, it's, it's huge. Uh, it's a lot of information. Everything is always taken down from BMI, from the one spot where the information is true, directly into the model, directly into the uh, into the door card. So there is no person moving information. There is no, no possibility to make a mistake unless you made a mistake in the database. Of course, we have point cloud where we scan everything. We have uh, drone pictures uh, that we make just for documentation, sorry. Uh, but it's, it's more like for, for documentation. And we have some data to the field so the designers' uh, models are going directly into the excavator. This is from the project course, and um, they, they know where to excavate, how deep to excavate. So we, we, all these flows of information make it easier to make it correctly. And then you don't need to think about, oh, have we sent the right information? How we did it? Uh, did, did it travel all the way? You know, have five people did their job all the time? It's, you eliminate this, and then you can do the fun part, fun, uh, part of the work. Whew, OK. <laughs> uh, so thank you. Uh, please talk to me. I, I have, as I said, I del deleted half of the slides before uh, coming here. So uh, uh, please come up and talk and ask if you have any. Thank questions. you very much, Thomas. Thanks. We have some questions here mm -hmm. from the audience. Uh, one is that uh, in in Sweden, uh, life cycle assessment is it a mandatory requirement for new built buildings? Uh, it, it is done on, on almost all projects. I'm, I'm not sure if it's, it's a requirement, but it's, to it's, what I've seen, it's, it's, it's everywhere done. Uh, yeah. Is it mandatory to calculate CO2 emissions for construction It's works? getting there. It's, it was not, it was not, but now, now it's probably, yeah. Okay. A, a I, I have of, help from Sweden. Yeah, so. a lot of technical <laughs> questions. Um, some contractors do not uh, even know how to use cloud storage. How do you educate them? We educate them. That's how it is. It's, how it's not always them? easy. It's not easy, but we have resources. We, and this is, this is the opportunity for the ones who are interested, because uh, when you do the digital project, it is a lot of new digital uh, competence that is needed. So. There is uh, companies who do the, the courses for the contractors, meet them regularly and show them how to do it. Sit, I sit with them sometimes and show this is how you do it. Uh, it's, it's a continuous uh, work uh, with people to, to make them work better way. But in Sweden, this transformation, more digitalization, what do you think, what are the roots? Uh, it's, it's pushed by government or it's coming no, out? No, this is the interesting part because Sweden has not had, uh, like the UK or many other countries, they never said uh, that you have to use it, but they did it anyway, more or less like with the masks. Uh, and and uh, uh, during Corona, there was no regulation that you should not go to work, but they, they did not go anyway. So th this is more the Swedish way how to do it. You don't impose the do it, you know. It's, it's more like, yeah, it's a smart way to, to it's a better way to do it, so we'll do it. Cool. Thank you, Thomas. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks.